The story of Hezekiah is one of the greatest examples of divine intervention in the Bible. Imagine an army of 185,000 soldiers ready to besiege a city, only to be defeated by a single angel sent by God. This astonishing event is just one part of the compelling narrative of King Hezekiah, a leader who stood firm in his faith despite facing numerous enemies. The Bible speaks powerfully of God's involvement in the lives of his people, and Hezekiah's story is a shining testament to this truth. As we delve into the life and reign of Hezekiah, we will explore his righteous actions, his steadfast trust in God, and the miraculous events that marked his time as king. From his bold religious reforms to the dramatic siege of Jerusalem, Hezekiah's story offers timeless lessons about the power of faith and the importance of trusting in God's promises. Join us as we journey through one of the Bible's most inspiring accounts of a faithful leader and the incredible ways God intervened on behalf of his people. To fully appreciate the significance of King Hezekiah's reign, it's important to understand the contrast between him and his father, King Ahaz. Hezekiah's background and his commitment to righteousness and adherence to God's commandments set him apart as one of Judah's most faithful and revered kings. Hezekiah's father, Ahaz, ruled Judah before him and is remembered for his unfaithfulness and idolatry. Ahaz's reign was marked by practices that were abominable in the sight of the Lord. He introduced idolatry on a large scale, even going so far as to sacrifice his own sons in the fire, following the detestable ways of the nations that the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. The Bible describes Ahaz's actions in 2 Kings chapter 16, verses 2 to 4. Unlike David, his father, he did not do what was right in the eyes of the Lord his God. He followed the ways of the kings of Israel and even sacrificed his son in the fire, engaging in the detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. He offered sacrifices and burned incense at the high places, on the hilltops and under every spreading tree. Ahaz's reign led Judah into a period of spiritual decline and disobedience to God's commandments. In stark contrast to his father, Hezekiah began his reign with a deep commitment to righteousness and a desire to restore true worship of the Lord. In the days of King Hezekiah, the land of Judah was filled with practices that strayed from the worship of the true God. Hezekiah, a king who believed deeply in the God of Israel, saw the need for significant religious reforms to bring his people back to faithful worship. One of Hezekiah's first actions was to remove the high places. These were altars scattered across the land where people would offer sacrifices, but not in the way God had commanded. Instead of worshipping in the temple in Jerusalem, people were sacrificing to false gods and idols on these high places. Hezekiah understood that these practices were against God's commands, as written in the Law of Moses. So he ordered the destruction of these high places, tearing down the altars to false gods. He also destroyed the Asherah poles. These wooden symbols represented the goddess Asherah and were often placed beside altars to the Lord, creating a mix of true worship with idolatry. Hezekiah's reforms were aimed at purifying the worship of God, making it clear that the God of Israel alone was to be worshipped. By removing these Asherah poles, Hezekiah demonstrated his commitment to following God's commands strictly. As it is written, You shall have no other gods before me, and you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven, above or on the earth beneath, or in the waters below, from Exodus chapter 20, verses 3 and 4. Another significant action taken by Hezekiah was the destruction of the bronze serpent Moses had made in the wilderness. Originally, this serpent was created at God's command to heal the Israelites who had been bitten by poisonous snakes. But over time, the people began to worship the bronze serpent itself, burning incense to it as if it were a god. Hezekiah recognized this as idolatry and had the bronze serpent destroyed, naming it Nehushtan, meaning a piece of bronze. This act was a powerful statement that even objects with a history of God's use could become idols if not kept in their proper context. 
Hezekiah's actions aligned with God's command as found in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 7, You shall have no other gods before me. Through these reforms, Hezekiah demonstrated his dedication to restoring true worship in Judah. His actions were a return to the teachings of the prophets and the law of Moses, ensuring that the people of Judah would worship God in the way he had commanded. Hezekiah's reforms are a reminder to us of the importance of pure and devoted worship, free from the influences of idolatry. By following Hezekiah's example, we can strive to keep our own worship practices pure, focusing solely on the one true God. This story of Hezekiah's reforms can inspire us to remove anything in our lives that might take the place of God, just as he removed the high places, Asherah poles, and the bronze serpent. It's a call to return to the basics of our faith, putting God first in everything we do, as instructed in the Bible. King Hezekiah of Judah was not only a religious reformer, but also a decisive leader in political and military matters. His reign saw significant events that shaped the history of his people. Addressing you today, I want to highlight some of Hezekiah's most notable political and military actions, showcasing his bravery and strategic thinking. One of Hezekiah's most daring actions was his rebellion against the king of Assyria. The Assyrian Empire was a powerful force, and many nations, including Judah, had been paying tribute to avoid invasion. However, Hezekiah, in his determination to free Judah from foreign domination, stopped paying tribute to the Assyrian king. This act of defiance was a bold statement of independence and faith in God's protection. The Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 7, And the Lord was with him. He was successful in whatever he undertook. He rebelled against the king of Assyria and did not serve him. Another significant military achievement during Hezekiah's reign was the defeat of the Philistines. Hezekiah launched successful campaigns against the Philistines, pushing them back and reclaiming territory. His victories extended from the watchtower to fortified city, demonstrating his military prowess and strategic skill. However, the political landscape was not without its challenges. During Hezekiah's reign, the Assyrians laid siege to Samaria, the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel. After a three-year siege, Samaria fell, and the Israelites were deported to Assyria. This tragic event was a stark reminder of the consequences of turning away from God's commands. The Bible records this in 2 Kings chapter 17, verses 6 and 7. In the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria captured Samaria and deported the Israelites to Assyria. All this took place because the Israelites had sinned against the Lord their God. Despite the fall of the northern kingdom, Hezekiah's faith and leadership remained steadfast. He fortified Jerusalem and prepared for potential Assyrian retaliation by strengthening the city's defenses, including the construction of the famous Siloam Tunnel to ensure a steady water supply during a siege. His preparations and reliance on God's guidance showcased his wisdom and commitment to the safety and well-being of his people. Hezekiah's political and military actions were characterized by a mix of faith, courage, and strategic acumen. His rebellion against Assyria and victories over the Philistines highlighted his determination to secure Judah's independence and prosperity. At the same time, the fall of Samaria served as a sobering lesson about the importance of remaining faithful to God. Now, let's delve deep into one of the most intense and dramatic events in King Hezekiah's reign, the siege of Jerusalem by the Assyrian king, Sennacherib. This period tested Hezekiah's faith, leadership, and the resolve of his people. As we recount this story, we will see Hezekiah's courage and trust in God shine through. The troubles began when Sennacherib, the powerful king of Assyria, launched an attack on Judah's fortified cities. His army was formidable, and they swiftly captured several key locations, threatening the very heart of Judah. The Bible tells us in 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 13, In the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah's reign, Sennacherib king of Assyria attacked all the fortified cities of Judah and captured them. This invasion was a dire situation, and the people of Judah were filled with fear and uncertainty. 
In an attempt to prevent further destruction and to protect Jerusalem, Hezekiah sought to appease the Assyrians by paying a substantial ransom. He stripped the gold from the doors and doorposts of the temple and gave it to Sennacherib, hoping to buy peace. This act of desperation is recorded in 2 Kings chapter 18, verses 15 and 16. So Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the temple of the Lord and in the treasuries of the royal palace. At this time, Hezekiah king of Judah stripped off the gold with which he had covered the doors and doorposts of the temple of the Lord and gave it to the king of Assyria. Despite this heavy tribute, the Assyrian threat persisted. Sennacherib was not satisfied with the ransom. He wanted complete control over Jerusalem and demanded its surrender. He sent his officials to deliver a message to Hezekiah and the people of Jerusalem, mocking their trust in God and urging them to give up. The Assyrian field commander stood before the walls of Jerusalem, speaking in the Hebrew language to intimidate the people, saying, Do not let Hezekiah deceive you. He cannot deliver you from my hand. Do not let Hezekiah persuade you to trust in the Lord when he says, The Lord will surely deliver us. This city will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. These words are recorded in 2 Kings chapter 18, verses 29 and 30. The Assyrians sought to break the spirit of the people, undermining their faith in God and their king. The Rabshakeh continued the psychological warfare. He said, On whom are you depending, that you rebel against me? Look, I know you are depending on Egypt, that splintered reed of a staff, which pierces the hand of anyone who leans on it, as recorded in 2 Kings chapter 18, verses 20 and 21. But the Rabshakeh did not stop there. He directly attacked the faith of the people in their god, declaring that none of the gods of other nations had been able to save them from the might of Assyria. He mocked Hezekiah's reforms and efforts to purify the worship in Judah, suggesting that the Lord himself had sent the Assyrians to destroy Jerusalem. Has the God of any nation ever delivered his land from the hand of the king of Assyria? How then can the Lord deliver Jerusalem from my hand? He boasted, according to 2 Kings chapter 18, verses 33 and 35. These words were designed to instill fear and doubt among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The Assyrians hoped to demoralize the people, making them question their faith and the wisdom of their king. The Rabshakeh spoke in Hebrew, ensuring that everyone within the city walls could understand his taunts. This psychological assault was meant to weaken the resolve of Jerusalem's defenders without a single arrow being fired. Despite the intimidation, Hezekiah's response was one of humility and faith. He instructed his officials, including Eliakim, Shebna, and Joah, to not answer the Rabshakeh's provocations. Instead, Hezekiah turned to God in prayer, and understanding the gravity of the situation, Hezekiah also sought the counsel of the prophet Isaiah. He sent his officials, including Eliakim, Shebna, and the leading priests, to Isaiah, asking for his intercession and guidance. The message Hezekiah sent is recorded in 2 Kings chapter 19, verses 3 and 4. This day is a day of distress and rebuke and disgrace, as when children come to the moment of birth and there is no strength to deliver them. It may be that the Lord your God will hear all the words of the field commander, whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to ridicule the living God, and that he will rebuke him for the words the Lord your God has heard. Therefore pray for the remnant that still survives. Isaiah's response brought comfort and hope to Hezekiah and the people of Jerusalem. The prophet conveyed God's message, assuring them that they need not fear the blasphemous words of the Assyrian king. Isaiah's prophecy, found in 2 Kings chapter 19, verses 6 and 7, stated, Tell your master, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid of what you have heard, those words with which the underlings of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Listen, when he hears a certain report, I will make him want to return to his own country, and there I will have him cut down with the sword. This divine promise assured Hezekiah that God was in control and that Sennacherib would be defeated. The fulfillment of this promise came in a dramatic and miraculous way. That very night, 
the angel of the Lord went out and struck down 185,000 soldiers in the Assyrian camp. This divine act of judgment was swift and devastating, leaving the Assyrian army decimated. The Bible describes this event in 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35. That night the angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 in the Assyrian camp. When the people got up the next morning, there were all the dead bodies. The sheer scale of this divine intervention left no doubt about God's power and His protection over Jerusalem. The morning after the angel of the Lord struck the Assyrian camp, Sennacherib awoke to find his once mighty army in ruins. The loss of so many soldiers forced him to abandon his campaign against Jerusalem. Humiliated and defeated, Sennacherib withdrew to his capital city of Nineveh. This retreat marked a significant turning point as the threat to Jerusalem was lifted by the hand of God. The Bible records Sennacherib's retreat in 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 36. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, broke camp and withdrew. He returned to Nineveh and stayed there. Sennacherib's story did not end with his retreat. His downfall continued as he faced internal strife and betrayal. While he was worshipping in the temple of his god Nisroch, Sennacherib was assassinated by his own sons. The Bible recounts this event in 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 37. One day, while he was worshipping in the temple of his god Nisroch, his sons Adramelech and Sherezer killed him with the sword, and they escaped to the land of Ararat. And Esarhaddon, his son, succeeded him as king. This assassination brought an end to Sennacherib's reign and underscored the ultimate futility of opposing God's will. The divine intervention that saved Jerusalem is a powerful reminder of God's sovereignty and His faithfulness to His promises. Hezekiah's unwavering faith and prayerful reliance on God were met with a miraculous display of divine power. This chapter teaches us that, no matter how dire the circumstances, God is always in control and capable of delivering His people in ways beyond human understanding. Reflecting on this story of divine intervention, we are encouraged to trust in God's promises and to have faith in His protection. Hezekiah's experience shows us that when we turn to God in prayer and seek His guidance, we can rely on His strength and faithfulness to see us through any challenge. The miraculous deliverance of Jerusalem stands as a testament to God's power and His enduring commitment to those who place their trust in Him. If there is one lesson we should remember from the story of Hezekiah, it is the power of genuine prayer in the face of adversity. Hezekiah's unwavering faith and heartfelt prayers brought about divine intervention and miraculous deliverance. His story reminds us that no matter how monumental our challenges may be, we should face them with faith and seek the Lord's assistance and guidance. Remember this lesson, my friends. In your own times of trial and difficulty, let Hezekiah's example inspire you to approach God with a sincere heart and steadfast faith. Trust in His promises and believe in His ability to deliver you from any challenge. Thank you for joining us in exploring the remarkable story of Hezekiah. May his faith and trust in God encourage you in your own journey. See you in the next video.